Oh, it's sideways. It is Moonfish here. The lens is dirty. I hope that's a little bit better for your viewing pleasure. I'm super excited to share this video today. This is part two of my little giving back video. So as I explained in the last video, which if you haven't checked out already, I highly recommend you go watch. I'm trying to give back a little bit. It's an evil world we live in, and everyone on this platform is just trying to take, 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 take things from their viewer. I'm rambling on. I had specific things I wanted to say, and I fucked, so I'm gonna just keep going. We're trying to flip it up. I wanna have a way better relationship with my viewers and my audience than most, so I'm trying to give back. I wanna try add some value to my content, if that makes sense. So, I'm trying to provide you with a little information, the goal of the video. I really hope you learned something. So, yeah. As I was saying, this is part two of a super epic video. If you haven't checked out part one, I highly recommend you go check that out. We went and I taught you exactly how you can catch these little fish that I'm gonna be preparing up today. So yeah, in this video, this segment of the video, I'm going to be chefing it up for you and it's just more of a vlog feel, a little less fishing, but it's still fish related content. So yeah, with all that being said, I really hope you enjoy. Make sure to smash like if you do, and subscribe if you're not already. I am grinding so hard. There's people walking by. I'm grinding so hard to make this my full-time job. This is my dream. And if you think you're going to stop a man from reaching his dream, you're nuts. So, like I said, tons more fishing content coming. Make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out on that. Also, my epic sponsor, Venture Wetsuits. Love those guys to death. If you want to get any of their epic gear, you can use my code MOONFISH for 10% off. Another thing for you right there. So with all that being said, let's pick where we left off and get right into it. All right, just got back to the house. There's our specimens. So super easy. Caught them. They're still super fresh. They're still wet. Still kind of like, look at that. His nerves are still firing. How's that, Les? Oh, yeah, not bad. Nine o'clock. So look at this. We left just at eight, an hour. We left at eight, came back 9.06, hour and six minutes. And that includes getting everything ready, rigging up, going down to the spot, catching them all and coming back. So I'd say pretty easy and good fun. Me and Les are actually gonna play a little game here. So we wanna see how much the total weight is. We're gonna throw the stringer on the scale. Les made an outrageous claim and said, this is gonna be three pounds, but <laughs> we'll see. That would mean each one is a pound. So I think it's a little under. I'd say 2.2, but run away on and see. Because I'm curious too. It's literally 1.8. So official weight reading. We're gonna see. We've got a little loop. Brought our three little guys. Gonna hook it on there. We got 2.3. So less was close. I was closer. There's our fish. Three fish. Two pounds, good fun. Yeah. We're keeping this super simple. I'm just right next to a bush, just so. It's one thing if the scales are on the ground, but if you don't clean them up, then it kind of causes an issue for you and the people around you. But there's lots of micronutrients in scales. So if you sweep them into a bush, that's a good way to get rid of them without causing anyone damage. Cause I know a lot of people hate scaling fish. And if I can make that a little easier for you, you should drop a like. <laughs> drop a like for that little scaling technique. I know everyone hates scaling fish, and especially the hassle of cleaning it up after. So, little tip. First thing, so we had these guys on the stringer just for transportation. So, take them off the stringer, and then, like I said, super simple. Not using anything fancy, shell. It's large, but that's all it is. So, take our fish, and the scales go this way. So you want to go against the grain, if that makes sense. So you see this way is with the grain and this way is against the grain. So you're just going to give the fish a little bend so his scales pop up a little easier and you're just going to go down his entire length of his body, getting all those little scales off. So you see how they're flying everywhere. Since we're right next to this bush, majority of them land right in there and the ones that don't, we'll just be able to sweep right into there. The bugs and all that will be able to eat them. It'll be good. See, once you get started, it's a little easier, tricky to get those first couple off. Yeah, just gonna go up this guy's entire body, get all the scales off. So all I'm doing is I take my hand, pin his tail down, and hold it down as tight as I can, and then go against the scales, and they just come off with the shell, the lip of the shell. 
can do this with a spoon. They make scalers. I'm just trying to show you the easiest way, the simplest way. So as you see, just finished one side of the fish. So I went from the top of his head all the way down to his tail. You want to make sure you don't miss any. So there's scales all over the fish. So you just want to make sure you go over any part that has scales. There's scales underneath his tail, on his belly. A lot of people forget to scale the fish's belly. There's scales on top of his head. So I'm just going to hit all those, flip it over to the other side, rinse and repeat, and I'll see you when we're pow. All right, so we got our fish. You never want to put fresh water on saltwater fish, but the layer of skin protects it. So that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see any chef put fresh water on saltwater fish. It breaks down the meat. I don't know exactly what the scientific word is, but you're never supposed to do that. When the fish still has its skin and scales on, it's fine. So we're just rinsing off the scales from the skin. It's not going on the actual meat just yet. So just putting that out there in case anyone like me is watching. It's my worst nightmare. So yeah, we're just gonna clean them up. So you see that little blood clot that I just got out. You see all that? That's what I'm talking about. And I sprayed inside his gills, so we're just cleaning them up. I'm gonna rinse and repeat, get all these guys cleaned up, and I'll see you when we're gut. Okay, so we just got our fish all cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna talk you through gutting them real quick, and I'm gonna do that because earlier when we were catching them, I was talking about how the flats fishing and fishing where these guys are super abundant has been tricky recently for all kinds of fish and it's pretty self-explanatory these guys are competition anything that's not supposed to be there is competition for the things that are supposed to be there so it's not doesn't it's not rocket science you know i was trying to explain it earlier like it was like i have a theory that da, 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 but these guys are invasive and they're in the waters that our native fish are so of course it is competition i'm gonna crack these guys bellies open and show you exactly what i'm talking about here i just don't want to puncture his uh, guts as I, I just want to cut the skin but there's this bone here that I have to go through so bear with me I'm just gonna go slow just to do it right you know cutting the belly skin without popping the guts if you pop your guts then that belly cavity is contaminated with guts make sense so we just made an incision from his collar down to his anal fin and then we're just gonna open that thing up a little bit more going up towards his head open them up a little bit this guy was hungry doesn't seem like there's much in there so there's his gut cavity I'm gonna show you something cool you can actually take a fish's gills and guts out at one speed so we don't want the gills in there either any extra blood in the fish is unnecessary so I'm just gonna snap that piece right there that connects his body to his head so you see just like that it's gone and then I'm gonna finish my incision that I made from the anal fin that's gonna just go all the way through so you see how it's connected at those two points so I'm just finishing my incision you see how it's closed now it's open so then the guts and the gills are all connected you're gonna grab where it connects kind of maneuver it off like how I just did there and then you kind of just peel it down and it'll take all those guts out with it so you see there's his gills and his throat and all that and then you just peel it down and all the intestines and all that just kind of trail along with it. There's where it connects out his poop chute. All right, buddy. So uh, towels are interesting. They're the one Hawaii fish that have this weird, anyone who's caught towels before know they've got this orange stuff in them. I personally don't know what that is. I know this part right there, that's his liver. I know that there's his stomach. So you see there's where he sucks in the food and his gills and all that and he swallows it and it goes into his stomach here doesn't seem like there's much in it that's why he was whacking our stuff we can look though so to check a fish's stomach all you're gonna do you never want it by you never want gut contents by your catch but we're being smart so i'm just gonna cut the tube where it connects they have backwards facing teeth to keep the food in their belly so you cut those off and then the belly contents can just slide in and out I don't think there's too much in here. That's why this guy whacks so quick. So a little early in the night, yeah, there's just like goo in there, digested crabs and such. I was hoping I'd catch one in the act, eating a super particular thing, like a mantis shrimp is what I was looking for. Kind of rushing, so mind my skills. If this was a thousand dollar bluefin tuna, I'd treat it differently, I promise. So same, same, gills and guts, pull it all down and out. And they've got that orange stuff. Let me know in the comments down below what that orange stuff is. It's either row or it's there. Leave it down in the comments below if you know. I'm just going to remove it because we ain't eating it. But yeah, it's only in the towels. Out of all the Hawaii fish that I've caught and cooked, 
It's only these toys that have this strange orange body part in there. And I'm not too sure what it is. It keeps going out. So last one, the biggest one. Okay, so that's two of three done. Unfortunately, they it was still super early in the night, so they didn't get to too much feeding. If I have a theory that later in the night they would have had uh, more stuff in their bellies, cause um just they would have been feeding longer. We got there right after dark, so I'm sure they didn't have too much time to steal all the bait from the other fish. If we were to fish all night, we'd probably catch one other fish species, and the rest of them would just be these guys. Me and Les have filled buckets before. I have some pretty insane photos on my old phone. If I can find them, I'll pull them up. But So same, same, just like before. Cut down to the anal fin, open up that cavity. So same, you wanna separate body from head. See, separated. You wanna separate gills from head. separated then you want to finish your incision you can't finish the incision until you detach his body from his head so see finish the incision open that up a little more just for easier access and then you want to just pinch and pull so you see a pinch hard and you pull it down and everything will come with it so you see all those guts you just pull them straight down they're all connected right there no spilling of guts, no popping of guts anywhere. Enough yapping though. Got the fish all cleaned up. Enough yapping though. Finally got the fish all scaled, cleaned, gutted. Unfortunately, none of them had any crabs or shrimps or any kind of anything. All of their bellies are empty. Every single gut is right there. So that is unfortunate and it kind of counteracts the point I was making earlier of them being competition. But my counterclaim to that is that it was just, it was early in the night, so they weren't feeding fully. If these guys had a big full belly, I guarantee you we'd pop it open. It would be all the same stuff that the papillos, oeos, all that are competing for. If you liked the video so far, make sure you drop a like. Drop a like for cameraman Les. Just got back from inside. I grabbed a bag and some napkins, and I'll explain that in a second. But first, you're probably like, what do I do with all these guts? And it's not too bad. This is way, like, an ants can eat this. And so what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to take it. You can put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in a freezer, and freeze it until the next time you're at the beach and get rid of it. Or if you live somewhere, you can dispose it. You can dispose it. So that's just what you can do if you don't live near anywhere, you can dispose this. Anyone can do this stuff. So for us, I'm going to throw this in a Ziploc and throw it in the freezer. But just get it away from your meat. Next thing we're going to do, so since we can't, cook tonight since it's a little late and Les has to go to work. We are going to package these up and put them in the fridge, but that's good for you too. So if you're not cooking them tonight, you can see exactly how we do it. So first thing I'm gonna do, I would love to have paper towels. That would be ideal, but I don't. And so I was like, you know what? I'm sure no one has paper towels either. So just use what you got. All the point of the paper towel is, is to clean the fish off and absorb the moisture while it's in the fridge. So I'm just gonna take one napkin. So I didn't have any paper towels, so I'm using napkins. We're using what we got. So we're just gonna give this a wipe, all that little excess, anything that was on the cutting board or near the other ones, you know, the fish's skin touched the ground, the ground touched people's feet and it touches the cutting board. So I'm just gonna clean them off a bit. Napkin is used to clean. So I'll just go in the gut cavity, wipe off all that extra slime. Maybe there's some bait on his tail or something that you don't want in there. So you're just cleaning them up. Wipe off all that. Wipe off all that. Take your bag. And then store them with the paper towel as well. But like I said, don't have paper towels. All I have is napkins. It'll do the job though. All the point of it is is to absorb moisture. So it's like not decomposing in your fridge overnight. So napkin on each side. And pop it in the bag. So you see? That's just my handprint. Open this bag up. Put it in there. So yeah, just gonna rinse and repeat. See how that is. It's just got a nice scaled, clean towel, paper towel in a bag, all G. It can stay good like this for, I mean, up to a week, honestly, as long as you're like properly taking care of it, switching out the paper towels, it's the right temperature. Like it can last a decent amount of time. Me, I'm going to use this tomorrow, so it doesn't matter, but I'm showing you just for proper fish handling. 
expertise. This video is for the people who aren't as lucky as me to be raised by the uncles and stuff like that. So spread the knowledge. I'm gonna rinse and repeat, do the same things. I'll see you in the fridge. Roger, all right, so we just jumped into the kitchen. We got our fresh little toe out here, all packaged up like I showed you. So I just took off the napkin that I was using and you can see it's still decently dry. That's important because when moisture builds up on your catch, it uh, decomposes it. So you never want moisture on your fish. So we got our little towel. So I'm gonna cook these up three different ways and hopefully you get inspired to do it one way yourself. So first way, we're gonna do raw fish, sashimi. The second way, we're gonna actually head down to the beach. We're gonna film another video with our buddy, but he wants to sample some fish out. So we're gonna fry some up on the beach. And then I'm not too sure what we'll do with the last one, but we're gonna figure it out. Main thing, sashimi first. So I'm just gonna talk you through how I cut this guy and then that's about it. So Les's headlight was way too harsh, but I threw a wet napkin over it so that it would uh, be a little more dim. All right, so the neighbor was nice enough to let us sample out his knife sharpener. So I'm just gonna run my knife through it real quick cause sharp knife is super important when cutting fish. So your knife blade, when it's dull, it'll grab the meat and hold it and it'll be more of a tearing. With the super sharp knife, it slices right through. You have way cleaner cuts, better texture. Everything will be better with the sharp knife. It also speeds up the process. So there's three different settings. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I'm pretty sure one you strip the blade with and then the other two you use to like reshape and sharpen it. So I'm gonna just use them all. Knife should be sharp enough. We're gonna get right into it. We have our towel, our invasive snapper. First thing when you're cutting a fish, you're gonna wanna separate the fillets from his body. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my outline. And all that is, is a shallow cut around his, like the outline of the filet or the piece of meat that I want. So you get a decent amount of yield. Yield is just how much meat you get from the actual product. So say the whole fish is one pound and you only get half a pound of meat, your yield is half pound. So I'm gonna try to get as big as a yield as possible. I'm just gonna outline his head. I'm gonna go over his belly, just cause we're gonna do something with that later too. So all it is, it's not a deep cut, it's just shallow cut your outline of what your filet, your finished product's gonna be. Then I just run it down to his tail. And you can do two things here. You can go all the way through and out, and that'll get a decent amount, or you can mark it where you wanna do it. I'll do both for you. So I'll mark one, and then I'll cut to it. So you see, just have our outline that goes from the bottom half to his tail. I'm going to spin him around and I'm going to finish my outline on its top so you can see that. So I'm just going to go in with the point of my knife to get it in through the skin. I'm just going to go along his uh, spine and his top fin here. The tip of my knife is non-existent. So this knife used to have a really sharp tip but it's cut so many fish that it's wearing down now. So bubble blade if you want to help your boy out should send me one of these. I use a knife more than anyone out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline his body. Or finish outline his body, I should say. The neighbor Doug said he calls this the rich man's tilapia. I thought that was hilarious, because it really is. To go down his back, you'll connect to remember I marked his tail right there where the end of our outline is. So then we have our full fish outlined and then we'll just finish our cut and take off our filet. Just finished outlining the fish. Now we're gonna finish our cut and our filet. So all I'm gonna do is lift up the piece of meat that I just started the outline on and work my way down the fish until the whole side comes off. I'll uh, demonstrate that now. So all I'm doing is just with each swipe of the knife, just going a little bit further and further down. And that way we get the most meat off this little guy as we can. You get a little bit to show you, Doug. Perfect. Like I said, lift them up. Continue to go down. These guys are not the biggest, so it is a little tricky, but this is just for demonstra demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna go down to his spine. And then once you get to his spine, the middle part, this is where it gets a little tricky and where people lose a lot of meat. That's why with big tuna fish, they cut along the spine and you get that top and bottom loin. With this guy though, we're gonna just go up and over his spine, if that makes sense. So you wanna angle your knife like that when you're going over his spine. Because if you just continue your cut down, you'll go over his spine and that whole bottom section where that spine like bumped up your knife will be, you'll miss it. And there's not a lot of meat to miss on this guy. So we want to get as much as we can. Would it be better if you come on this side for this? Uh -huh. So you see, I'm just lifting up the meat and then going down along the backbone and that'll just help us get all the meat. So see, just went over his spine. 
and then we're gonna finish down to the bottom so you see we're starting to get up and then as we get further up there's gonna be these rib bones that connect it so we're just gonna lift this side up and pop right through them but got a little bit more to cut real quick so you see right there that's what i was talking about one of those ribs so we're just gonna go like that when you have a sharp enough knife you can cut through them so you heard that little crack that was his little ribs we're gonna go up towards his head and just like that i didn't outline deep enough so you see the fillet is fully off it's just the outline that's left so finish our outline cut a little bit deeper since i went just shallow for the outline and then there you go there's your little fillet of toao you always put your fish skin side down on everything because the fish's skin touches the floor which touches people's feet which touches gross things so you never want to have skin on meat or meat on skin you always want to have skin on skin or meat on meat Therefore, you always keep what's going in your mouth clean as possible. So, uh, yeah, there's one side of our little specimen. Nothing major. It's just for demonstration purposes. So, there you go. Uh, we're going to go ahead, flip this guy over. That up there. So, same, same. Rinse and repeat. I did. I'm going to do my outline, and then we're going to finish the cut. So, outline him. Do a little bit different outline. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. So, since we gutted these guys, there's no reason for me to go and outline his belly normally when you outline a fish's belly it's because you didn't gut him first and you never want to pop those guts if you pop a fish's guts that whole inside belly cavity is contaminated with all kinds of stomach bile and stuff like that so outlining your fish you want to miss his guts if it's still in there we gutted ours so i'm going to show you a different way to do it i'm just going to go right by his pec fin i'm going to go straight towards his head like that so hopefully this will give us a little more yield in our cut so you've seen this one i outlined his belly this one, I didn't. So we'll see if we get a little more meat by that. Oh, so, just like this. Another thing too, so you see how the fish, once you have one side off, is not even. If you want your fish even and to lay on its uh, side properly, you can just take his head off. You can break your hand. If you take his head off, so his head came with one of those collars. I'll take the side off too. So right here is a little belly section along with this collar. Both are good fried, so we'll take this collar off too. So you see, there's a little toro collar. We'll take this one off. So you see, got the two collars, and then I'll take this part of his belly off as well. See, belly, the belly meat, see that white stuff? That's a layer of fat. People really like the fatty pieces of fish for fried fish just because it's more like oily and tender. So little piece of toe belly you can see all the fat on there so we got his two pieces of belly we got his collars we got his head and now see it sits flat and so this way you can get a way cleaner cut learn that from tuna fish cutting because when you have the big tuna fish and he's only half like this it's all lopsided and you got to do weird angles with your knife so you take his head off lay him flat and there you go now he's flat on the cutting board you can do a proper cut so all right so we pretty much got this thing entirely broken down we're gonna do this last side. So you saw I did one side and then I took off the belly, collar, and head so that he'd lay flat. Now we're gonna do this side. Your second fillet should be a little bit better than your first one, just cause with less stuff on there, it should be able to be a bit more easy to cut it. It's pretty hard going into it, just like this is a fish. Now we're gonna make it parts. So once you kind of get going, it gets a little easier. You kind of get a feel of the fish. So. I just finished the outline so i'll show you with this one what i was talking about you go all the way through and then you can just go towards his tail and that will finish the uh finish your outline like that i'm gonna do this bottom side i'm just gonna go above this fin where the fillet starts finish our outline towards the tail there we go so the fish is outlined now we're just gonna pull up the meat like last time so you see how i slide my finger in there and i run it down just to lift it up so you want to lift and you want to slice so I run my finger and I get it to come up a little bit. Minor adjustments, it's just like jiving, you know? When you're driving and you're going into the other lane a little bit, you don't want to turn the wheel and swerve across the entire highway. You just want to do little minor adjustments to keep yourself in there. So I'm just going to do little minor adjustments, nothing crazy. If you tried to do this one speed, you'd definitely miss a lot of meat. It'd be a lot faster, but your yield would be way lower. And if you're a chef, you know how important that is. So we're gonna continue our cuts, continuing our cuts. And since we did a little bit different outline on this side, 
There's gonna be a little bit of pin bones that we gotta get through, but that'll be real easy. Such a small fish, I'm having a hard time here. As you can see, I'm just gonna keep lifting and slicing. And once you get to your other outline, finish them up. See, there's our filet. I'm gonna remove it from the fish's body. So there's those pin bones I was talking about. To get those off, I'm just gonna do one simple. So you heard those crunches, all those bones. There's a little bit of tendon there, so we're just gonna slice it with the knife. You wanna use your entire blade. You don't wanna use a little section. You, want, you have a long blade for a reason. So you wanna use the back of it, slide all the way to the front. And that'll keep that clean, nice cut. You never wanna saw a fish, cause sawing the fish really messes with its texture and quality. So there we go. Got our two pieces of toe out. Can clean it up a little bit. You see there's a little bit stomach on there, so. We'll do that right now. So you see here's his frame. That's just bones, his tail. You can fry this, crunch it. Uh, we're gonna use it for a crab trap bait just so it doesn't go to waste. So clean up your filet. You see there's a little bit of belly lining with that little bit of intestine there. So we're just gonna slice it off using our entire blade, like I said. So you see when you use the whole blade, it really keeps a cleaner cut rather than sawing. So you see just like that, cleaned up our filet. So we got two little toe out chunks right there and like i said proper fish handling so you always want to do either meat on meat like that or you want to do skin on skin like that you never want meat on skin because like i said skin touches no good things and we don't want that in our food so food safety so we just broke down our toe out i'm going to show you how to cut some sashimi out of this so we just got our toe out all broken down. So we got his head. You can use that for soup or bait or whatever. There's lots of good micronutrients in here. All kinds of edible pieces. You got his belly, those little fatty pieces. You can fry that up. You can do whatever. Same with the collars. And then his frame. So you can use the whole fish. For us, this demonstration, we're gonna use the fillet, the fillet or the filet. We're just gonna cut some sashimi. So there's the fish broken down. We'll, uh, Go onto the smaller cutting board, get some better lighting, and I'll show you what to do with this. Just transferred over to another cutting board just so for demonstration purposes. So, got our fish. All I'm gonna do is show you how to clean it up. So, fish have a bloodline that runs down the middle of them. That's just how his blood goes up and down through his body. It's not the entire fish, but it is one section right here. So, it's a like, it's like this big, if that makes sense. We're just gonna trim it out because the bloodline, the blood is what tastes more like fishy, metally. And a lot of times people will taste that and be like, oh, I don't like fish. When really it's just, no one likes bloodline. So trim the bloodline. There's not too much since we did a good job at bleeding these guys. So you see how small of a bloodline there is there. Normally with other fish, and especially when you don't bleed them, it'll be a huge red thing, but should be able to see it a little better after I trim it up. So you see this red, that's it. So I'm gonna go on one side of it. And like I said, we wanna use our entire knife blade. You got 12 inches of blade, you may as well use it, right? Don't just use the top. So I'm gonna go from the back, slice down. So you see, when you slice down like that, way cleaner cut. I'm not sure exactly, I'm not sure exactly the science of it, but it's something like that. These guys actually have no bloodline. Bro, how's that, Les? We bled them so good, there's no blood in the, in the filet. That's it, that pink little bit, that's it. it looks like chicken. It blows my mind, actually. I wanna talk about that. So fish, Taking proper care of your fish is super, super important. So you guys saw we bled our fish properly and there's little to no bloodline, which is actually crazy. I was really expecting there to be a bit bigger of one. But when you take proper care of your fish, everything goes right. So I'm just gonna separate this. All I did was cut down the lateral line where the bloodline should be, but there's not. It's just a piece of meat all the way through. So finish our cut, skin holding it on. I'm gonna finish our cut. Oh, I messed up. You know what I just realized? I should have skinned this guy before I made it smaller. So. So since this is such a small fish, it'll be really hard to remove the skin from the fish once it's smaller pieces. So I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna do this as best as I can. To skin a fish, what I like to do is I like to make a little cut on the meat just so I have somewhere to grab with my fingernail. Cause if you try to do this without the little cut, it'll slip everywhere. So you can also pin it down with something as well. All I do, start my incision and then you just wanna go pressing down along the entirety of the fish and then remove his skin. It's a little easier with the scales, but I'm gonna try, so bear with me. Super tricky with, super tricky with small fish. I'm gonna make it work though. Hopefully I don't butcher this. All right, so here we go. Just gonna go ahead and skin this now. 
really tricky. Super tricky to do this with a little fish, so bear with me. I'm trying to do as best as I can without wasting any meat. Get all right there. So bang, there we go. Got our skinless filet now. It's a little bit, uh, what's it called? Lopsided, but it's all right. So that's super hard to do with really little fish. So you guys see right here, that's his bloodline. That's supposed to be running out throughout the entirety of the filet, but you see how little bit there is because we bled our fish properly. So you guys see that it's barely faded in just because we let all that blood drain out properly, not build up and stay in the fish because blood also decomposes your catch. So there we go, we just took the skin off can uh, fry the skin, make some crispy fish skin. You can throw it at your friend. You can do whatever you want with that. So got our skinless filet. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut some sashimi with it. Okay, so there you go. You seen, we just took the skin off our other side. I messed up. So you saw I uh, made this one into two pieces before I took the skin off. And then that just makes skinning it a lot harder. So I missed like a fraction of meat, but we'll live. So same, same, we'll do the other one. So got the second one. Now we're just gonna do same, same. Oh, I missed a lot on this one, but what can you do? Second one, skinned, done. There's our pieces. I'm just gonna cut little sashimi. So, so we got the first filet that we just all I did was I went to take the bloodline out. So here's the bottom part, here's the top part. I went to cut the middle, but there was barely any, so good. We're gonna cut some sashimi. I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. So you take your bottom piece, you can either give it a slight angle, that makes a good piece of sashimi, or you can also, if you have a thicker piece, there's like exact ways you're supposed to do this with fillets, but it doesn't look as proper. This is the top loin, if you can tell. If this was a tuna fish, I would cut it into like steak sections and then chop the top off and then make a nice block of sashimi. But since it's such a little fish, we honestly can just cut it as is and it'll still be a smaller, small enough piece of sashimi. So with sashimi, you do not want a big piece that people have to like gnaw on. People like texture a lot with sashimi cause it's a uh, most decent fish kind of tastes the same. So texture plays a big role. So we're gonna do some thin slice sashimi I'm gonna go for that melt in your mouth kind of thing. So flip our board, here's the bottom one. All I'm gonna do, cut at a slight angle and then that's about it. So I'm gonna start my cut, make a little edge and then I can either go straight like this and have these little pieces or I can do, like I said, that angled slice. So you saw when we cut with that angle, it gives us that edge. You see how small this little cuts are, so. And like I said, you wanna use your entirety of your knife. If this was a bigger fish, it would look more proper, but since it's so little, these little pieces of sashimi just look like little boogers. But trust me, if you follow these steps, everything's proper, so. Yeah, we're just gonna continue to cut sashimi and then place it. Uh, oh, one more thing. Shut the fuck up! And then like I said, you just wanna make sure you use the entire edge of your blade. You don't wanna be sawing at your fish because it gives you a way less nicer cut. So start from the back of our blade, give it that little angle, go to the front of our blade, you see like that, got our little piece of sashimi. So same thing. So see that? And we're just gonna continue our cuts. The thinner, the better. So you see, toao is not a bad fish at all. It's really white, clean meat. They eat the same stuff as the papillos, the moys, the oils, all that. So we're just gonna go ahead, finish cutting this, plate it up, and then try and have a bite. Okay, we just got our little sashimi plated up. We could have filled the whole plate up, but there's no sense in doing that for demonstration purposes. So a little bit show you. This is just soy sauce. A little bit of salt on your fish is always nice. Can also add wasabi if you like. I'll do one without wasabi and one with wasabi. So here goes the taste testing. So we're just gonna grab a little piece right here. So you guys see, little piece, a little bit show you, and then super good. 
So it's just a little thin piece of fish with that little uh, salty show you. Tastes super good, super good for you. And there you go. That's one way you can use your towels. Fish, I'm not gonna lie. It's actually super good because we took super good care of our fish. So thank you, Mr. Towel. We're gonna go ahead and whack this up and then I'll see you when we're cooking the next one. Yeah, like already filming. Okay, so we just got done cutting sashimi, headed over to the beach. Now we're gonna fry up some fish. So still got a little bit left from the previous one. I'm gonna show you how to cook them. Fully one of them, you can get inspired and go do it yourself. So we got our fish inside of a paper towel just to uh, reduce moisture. Moisture really breaks down your fish, so you don't want that on there at all. A little bit of skin on there still, so cutting board we're gonna take we have his collars too that we're gonna try out so trying to minimize waste we wanted to use every part of the fish and just about got that done i only brought a handful of seasonings because i wanted to make this point if you have to do a lot to your fish it's probably not that good quality of fish so we're gonna keep it super simple salt pepper garlic salt that is all um and we have the boys here so you'll get a genuine taste reaction yeah I'm just gonna do light seasoning on both sides so all I'm gonna do real quick is just, since there's a couple of us here, I'm just gonna make a couple more pieces. There's literally no rhyme or reason to this whatsoever. I'm literally just making a couple pieces for the boys to try. So you see there's one, there's two, there's three. Nothing fancy whatsoever, anyone can do this. So there's a little bit of skin on this one left. We're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna compare the one with skin to the one without skin. The skin is completely edible, but some people prefer it, some people don't. So yeah, super simple, just made pieces, that is all. And we're gonna season them. So just gonna season it up, a little bit of pepper. We're going super light on the seasoning, because like I said earlier, if you gotta do a lot to your fish, it's probably not that good a fish. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of garlic salt on there. Boys, you're gonna trip actually, it's like not bad. Okay, I'm gonna like flip it. Chase not chase, bro. Just try, try, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might it change for you. Because yeah, you might not have had it properly so done before. I'm allergic to a lot of shit in the sea. Yeah, I never had Toal Shashimi, and that shit was good. Yeah, no. Les was scared. I'm allergic to like still. fucking sca scallops, like fucking all well, that. That's shellfish. Yeah, this ain't shellfish. This is normal fish. Yeah. Do you eat sushi? And like, poke it on No. That's a shellfish, though. Yeah, no, some people can't eat like, like legit shellfish. So super simple, super light seasoning. Shout out my mom, I stole her stick of butter. Hopefully she doesn't beat my ass. <laughs> super simple, I'm literally just cutting the paper and the butter just to speed things up. Butter in the pan, simple. You wanna make sure you get as much as your fingers on there as possible. There you go. Make sure the fire's on. Like Les said, you wanna make sure your fire's on. <laughs> Angle. So we're gonna let that butter melt. That's kind of a lot for how much fish we have, but come fight me. So this is so simple. We're literally just at the beach park. Got a pan and butter. Light seasoning. Just gonna throw it right in there. I don't even have utensils to flip it with or anything. So it's gonna cook it till it's halfway cooked on one side. Flip it, fully cook it through, and then wash out the pan and I'll show you the next one. Oh man. How am I gonna flip this? No, he has a plastic fork. I, I know, but plastic fork. Yeah, like are you kidding me? I might have like a <laughs> Oh, oh no cap. So we just got our fish just about all crispy. I'm gonna start flipping them. Without sending less to the ER with third degree burns. Mind my chopstick skills. Just the flake, though. Ow! I know, I know. Go, 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 go. Flip it, flip it. You can never So, let the fish cook on one side, flipped it, and I cook it on the other side. Ow. We got cameraman Les helping out, so <laughs> drop a like for Les. Super simple. It's not fully cooked yet, so I'm gonna put it back on that side. I can do that too. Oh, yeah. Dude, you're gonna be surprised, bro. Like, you watched exactly what I did. So we're just gonna let it cook all the way through and I'll see you when I'm flipping it. Fish is all done. We're gonna plate it up and then we're gonna have the boys sample it out. So we get some genuine taste reactions. Oh damn, I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> no, that'd be good. His hands get fucking obliterated. Well, that smells nice. I like that piece right there. Yes, sir. 
So there we go. That was the first thing we did. I was just using up the leftover fish that we didn't cut with sashimi. So <laughs> yes, sir. Try it. Okay, boys. We're gonna have an honest taste test thing. I just popped the fish out of the butter. So. 425. Okay. <laughs> Less is going up first. Sample. All you can see is your light. So. Bago <laughs> ono. Oh no. All right. There's like hair on this one. <laughs> Oh, no, it's actually yeah. good. It's actually good. Oh, that's pretty For the amount of seasoning you put on there. There we go. See, right. we got some honest opinions. Right. Okay, this is the fire, real you know, taste test. Fire. This guy right here doesn't like fish. So we're going to get a steak. super honest opinion. It's literally steak, Chase. It's actually pretty good, Chase. Yeah. It's a chicken nugget, dude. It's, it's chicken, dies. bro. <laughs> yeah, he just collapses. I mean, it's all right. Oh, I'm just, you like it? I'm just not a fish guy. Oh. But what does it taste like? It just tastes like butter and salt, yeah? It tastes like fishy. Really? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you just got a little... I'm just not a fish guy. I fly. love fried fish, don't Hey, you didn't spit it out, though. Most <laughs> people would have spit that... Good chicken. No, I'm not going to lie, though. For the amount of seasoning you put on there, it's really flavorful. Yeah, I know. Like, the fish really, really comes through. Really, it's really yeah. good. It's, like, overpowering. The boys are stoked. It's a good... Yeah. There you go. Hope you're inspired to do this yourself. And if you are, make Thanks. sure you drop a like down below. Roger that. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wash out the pan and then jump right into the next thing so we can get on with this. Okay. Shout out Les. He just cleaned up the pan for us. All the boys contributed to help cleaning the pan. Chases. Chases eating the eye. So we got the collars here. We're gonna fry these up as well as one of the whole fish. So the last one we cooked in butter. And in case you have a biased opinion saying anything's good cooked in butter, we're going to cook the next one in vegetable oil just to show you another way to do it as well as uh, showing it's good. So pan's clean. I'm going to show you how to prepare the fish and then pop it in the pan. Okay, so we got our second to out here. All I'm going to do, like I said, keeping it super simple because if you have to do a lot to your fish, it's not that good fish. So I'm going to do super simple. All I'm going to do score the fish or put slits in it all that does it helps your seasoning go out through it and it also helps it cook through thoroughly as well so i'm just gonna there's no rhyme or reason to it you just kind of want them a little bit evenly placed if that makes sense and like i said all this does helps your seasoning get in there a little more and it also helps it cook all the way through flip to the other side same same i'm gonna do light seasoning throw it in the oil you can do this yourself so if that makes you excited, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed. We've got so much fishing content coming. So, like I said, super simple. Pink salt, That's garlic it. salt, and yeah, pepper. So, said, so simple. Flanny salt, a lot of it comes off in the oil. And when you're doing the whole fish, it's a, you want to give it a little more generous, if that makes sense. We're gonna do the collars as well, just as comparison, so you can see what to do with yours too. Okay. Salt, pepper. So yeah, super simple. Salt, pepper, garlic, salt. We just did both sides and we scored it. All I'm gonna do is pop that in some oil and then the boys are gonna pick at it. Let's get to it. Just got the pan turned on, pop in our oil. Just want to cover the bottom. We don't gout, that's why. So, so one thing I want to show off, one thing I want to show off real quick is you see how the eye is not foggy whatsoever. That is just another uh, proof that we took really good care of our fish and that it's still super high quality. Because anytime you go to a fish market and you see foggy eyes, you know that fish has not been uh, treated properly, probably was not the proper temperature, as well as it could be old. So you see we got some clear eyes, super nice fish, got it all seasoned up. See how hot our oil is. Oil's not hot enough yet, so I'm gonna see you as soon as this is bubbling. Okay, so we got our seasoned fish. Oil just got hot. Everyone's taking caution. Gonna pop it in there. And then we don't want it to have that bend in it, so I'm gonna try to get it to fit. It's getting third degree burns right now, but do it for the fish. One thing that's cool about frying fish like this, all of his fins, since they're super thin and they're all salty, this is what they call the Hawaiian potato chip right here. So after it's all fried and it's all salty, pop it in your mouth, chew it up. It's, you can't tell the difference between it and the potato chip. So super cool if you want to try that out yourself. Oil is super hot, so it doesn't take too long. We're just going to go like about a minute, minute, half on each side. Kind of use your judgment. 
there's no set rhyme or reason to this you can do it however you like so super simple uh yeah if you appreciate me showing you how to do this make sure you drop a like down below so i can eat a can of beans when i go home oh yeah we're not gonna forget we're dropping in the collars as well so one goal I had when going into this was I wanted to try to use as much of the fish as possible as I see a lot of people wasting everything. And so trying to minimize waste, got the collars from the fish that we made sashimi with. I'm gonna throw that in there as well. So minimizing waste, you can do this too. Smash like. One tip to reduce, you saw there's lots of splatter. The more you pat your fish down and the less moisture there is on the fish, the less it will react with the oil and the less you'll get third degree burns like us. We're rushing. I have a whole nother video I have to film after this, walking around the flat. So I'm just trying to get this done already. We saw first side all fried up and cooked. I'm going to go on this side. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Should have got a little bigger pan. Who wants to assist me? Oh, I got him. So just like that. We're just going to let it cook all the way through, pop it on some paper towels, and I'll see you when I pull it out. Oh yeah, we're going to flip the collars too. We saw those collars I was talking about. There we go. Get them up. Bang <laughs> Okay. Fish is all done, fully cooked. I'm going to take it out. So remember earlier I went heavy on the seasoning because you see there is not too much left. So once we pop it on here, I'm just gonna re-season it and I'm gonna try them out. So I'm grabbing them by his head just because it's super delicate. Thank you for the assist, Carter. Oh, yes, oh we got sir. the collars too. We're gonna let these chill in here for a little longer. So we just popped the fish out. Super simple. I'm not even gonna re-garlic salt it. All I'm gonna do, pink salt. All I'm gonna do. A little bit pink salt, oh, a lot pink salt, and then that's it. So super easy. So let's have the boys taste it. You get some genuine reaction, so you can see if I'm not just bullshitting. This ain't that bad. Oh, part two taste test. Yeah. All right. All fuckers gonna have street First street. official taste <laughs> test. I always. Carter's not scared. He's going for a big piece. I'm trying to turn down my volume. It's hot, mm -hmm. but it's good. good. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm these boys don't eat fish too often. So I gotta say the oil was better than the butter. Really? Mm -hmm. I think I think if yeah, you just put them less on no, the, on the butter. Yeah, 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 it like wasn't that, as like crunchy, that. but this is good. It's nice and flaky. Nice and flaky. Bring it, John. Off. Nice white meat. No, nah, Moon just didn't scale it good. Oh, no, the crunch oh, no, on no, it is this is better than the crunch on it is better than the butter. Yeah, The boys like the fried one a lot better. Go, go this. Give it a rating, boys. Mm. How good a fish is this? Say 7.8 out of 10. Damn! Yeah, 7.75. 7, 7, 7, 7.5? Say 7.8. Shout out Wendy's. <laughs> Wendy's! <laughs> oh, nah. Wendy's nuts. <laughs> there goes slams. Or I just had a dip on the table. It's okay, extra flavor. A little bit crunch. Winner. You gotta try yeah. Chase, just a little. No, just a little taste. The one, they said it's better than the chip. other one. So here we got, like I was saying, that Hawaiian potato chip. I need a yeah, light you're right. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, shit. I like. What would you say? Like a potato chip? Just Even like better? a potato chip. Even better. You guys want to make yourself a little bit healthier potato chip? It's not that healthy, but better than a Lay's. Oh yeah. Try the other color, Carter. So you see, nothing really goes to waste. You pretty much eat the whole fish, except if you uh, have a smaller one and you fry the bejesus out of it, you actually can crunch right through these bones. The bone marrow has so much micronutrients in it. You'll look like liver king. Eat this Steroids, bro. <laughs> can I eat straight that one? 100 no, cc's dude, you of sober, test straight you in you his collar, yeah? Crunch them, bro. <laughs> crunch them. Are you making sure? Yeah, yeah. Like the fish just swallow each other. They, the scales are calcium, the bones. The eyes, everything on this is edible and it's good for you. Like I, the onks will catch one like this big, fry it and just eat the whole thing. Damn. Yeah. So see, we're gonna finish this up. I didn't actually expect to finish the whole thing. When coming into this, I was like, <laughs> just try one piece for the camera. But these How boys low? actually enjoyed it. Man, Genuine reactions. Chase, we're still waiting on you to try it. <sighs> He's scared. 
It's okay. Come on, cheese. Come on, cheese. Peer pressure this way. You already tried the butter. That's right. You already tried the butter. Damn, you gonna let that slide, bro? Nah, he's not. Oh God, I like a little piece. But there we go. Yeah. There we Check go. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Not know, that like, bad. I like the butter better. Why Chase, they, Chase likes yeah. the butter better. If you want an opinion from someone who doesn't like fish too much, there you go. It's not that bad, and the butter one was better. So, oh, going. Look. Going, going. Mm. Head meat, collar, a little bit. Bang goes. Good. Super good. Really good. I get to all knowledge now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you boys can do this yourself, bro. Uh, that's actually going to wrap up the video. I really hope you learned something from it. This video has just been trying to give back. A lot of people on the platform just want to take from their viewers. I'm trying to switch it up. Trying to give something back to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash like and subscribe if you're not already. I post new fishing videos almost every day. So stay tuned for all that. We're going to be one of the fastest growing Hawaii channels here pretty soon. We almost already are. According to my analytics, my chart is like this. So watch out. Um, with all that being said, don't forget to use my code MOONFISH in the Venture Shop as well as the Screamless Flies Shop for 10% off your order. That also gives me a little bit of commission. So if you want to support your boy, make sure to do that. Uh, with all that being said, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Shoot!